Hey everybody, Noonan here, playing my favorite game, Watch Your Realms. And in today's upload on day three on the free to play series, I'm going to show you how to unlock the three times speed from the storyline by completing chapter eight of the storyline. Okay. And this is huge. Once you unlock this, all your gear farming, any autos you do will be half the time. Instead of two times speed, you're doing three times speed. Okay. So I'll show you the quick route if you're not familiar yet. If you hit go, it's going to send you immediately to where it's requesting you to take care of something. So we'll quickly hit this magnifying glass. And you can go through the heroes, the enemy, sorry, on any map you want. And it'll tell you what they wear, like armor, cloth, or whatever. And then what the resistance is and whatnot are, okay? You can do that on your own on any map. Why I brought you in here is to show you these two tentacles that are trying to smack the shit out of your heroes. And you don't want it, that to happen. You got to get rid of these two tentacles on this stage as soon as possible. On this stage, they don't respawn. But they also slap the ground. And they do an AOE area of effect damage to any units within a, it's at least a six tile, if not nine tile area. And you don't want it to happen. It's very hard to heal through, even with like a level five healer. So I have brought in two Lord bonuses. One of them is the watchers that you automatically get with Baruch. And I have four watchers. So that means that I'm going to get even more often procings of their attribute increase from the Lord bonus. I only have three piercers here, but I'm going to be deploying them all as well. So what's key in this map is, is that there's certain enemies that are like in the ethereal world or whatever, you can't target them, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is stick down my Lunaria and I'm gonna get rid of this one tentacle here. I don't want it around. It's nobody's buddy. It's looking for fights. Let's get rid of it. And you might be looking and be like, man, your Lunaria is gonna get her butt kicked in, right? So I bring in a healer right away. And you'll notice now that these mobs that are coming out, I should have enough time to get my defender on the map. Okay. So this tentacle is constantly going to every three seconds or two seconds attack my heroes. Okay. So I'm going to stick my constants in. She's not able to target that tentacle. That's how the game set it up for whatever reason. Okay. But what she is doing is blocking these enemies that are there. So now I put in a piercer to Zira, and she's going to help take care of the mobs that pile up on that tank, and then she'll target the tentacle last. Okay. But what you can do is, is I have constant, so she's going to add inspiration, which is sharing a percentage of her attack with units around her. So it's going to help my Tazira right here when I put her ultimate. So now I need to block this core at the bottom and this core to the left. And this tank here, Livia, can do that for us by putting her in one position. So she's blocking both lanes for us. So once you've gotten to this part and gotten rid of those tentacles, you're pretty safe in what you need to do for the rest of the stage, as long as you time your placements correctly. So these are the guys that you can't target until they bump into a defender or become blocked and they hurt. They hit hard. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is bring in another healer as soon as I can so that I make sure that my tank has two healers on her because you'll see how I have the two healers. She's going to get hit constantly, but she's not going to die. Okay. So I can now deploy only one more unit. Because you can only obviously put down eight on a map. So I want to put down a magic dealer to deal with those big maw head guys that show up. And it's going to be another horde that I was fortunate enough to pull named Raiden, who does AoE. Now, mind you, he's a magic dealer, but he deals so much magic damage that he's going to take care of almost anything as soon as it shows up. You notice here how my Piercer Lord, Lunaria, is just wrecking those little abyssal guys. That's those guys that had those those uh, warthog tusks or fangs at the bottom of their chins, all right? So this is why you bring in magic dealers. See how my Piercer can't really do anything to these shield guys, but my Raiden can. 
See the difference? Raiden's hitting them for 10 times the damage. And my Tazira actually has better gear on and it's got, a, I think, uh, an Awaken 1. So you put in Magic, Piercer. Magic, Piercer. So every spot that an enemy is going to pile up on a defender is targeted by somebody who is strong attack against that enemy, okay? So Tazir is hitting hard. Make no mistake about it. These mobs just have very high hit points, okay? They've got like 40k or something or 50k. So you'll notice, as I said, like I practiced this stage before I did this recording, okay? Maybe you'll one-shot it. But the cool thing about Watcher Realms is even if you weren't successful on your first attempt, it teaches you everything that I just showed you, I learned from experience. And now that experience, that joy of that journey is going to follow you and me for the rest of your game career in Watcher of Realms. And you'll start realizing that you've developed fundamentals and habits. Like if you were playing Little League Baseball, as I was fortunate enough, I had a coach that at the right age didn't care and told us it doesn't matter when you're nine years old, if you win any of the games, it's that you practice the fundamentals in the game, and then you will always be better consistently. So we're going to go into the camp, and we're going to see what uh, comes along the storyline after, in case you're curious to see if it's worth it, okay, to pass through uh, to get your three times speed. So here's path eight, complete, three times the speed. Thank you very much. So now they want me to clear stages in gear eight three, which uh, I'm already farming gold gear. So I've already done the uh, basic faction trial. I unlocked that yesterday. I've done it twice. Now I'm going to show you real quickly. If you're not familiar, uh, halfway through stage eight, or uh, sorry, storyline eight, you unlock at the, this gold set of the twisted blade. It does 10% more damage and they all roll all the time, no matter what account you're on, this gear is preset to roll at the purple, okay? So the sooner you get through storyline, the sooner you're gonna get your first legendary gear items. And you'd be like, well, where'd you get these other legendary gear items? And how come you have all this legendary gear on your heroes? It's because I was able to go into stage uh, gear rate three on day two, gear rate three, and I have it set to, to farm stage six, I two starred this one for stage seven. Okay. So now I want to show you, in case you're not sure you're having difficulties, the final boss fight in prologue one of Void Rift. And this is new content. If you're new to the game, we didn't have access to Void Rift for the first like five, six months of global launch of Watcher of Realms until you got to account level 40. So the fact that this game also gives you Volca as an assist hero makes it so much easier. So this boss here is a piercer, legendary lord. When you pull her, if you're lucky enough, from ancient shards or ancient summons are named Araka. And you'll see down here that you have your special assist of Volca, okay? So you can't take it out. You can't put another one in, okay? You can't borrow a hero ever in Void Rift content. So this hero, if you don't know, she will make it so that when she's deployed, any attacks that your heroes do on a target, they heal for a percentage. It's like 1% or 2% of their life, depending on her skills. If you have a Awaken 1 Volca, she reduces the res timers of all your heroes by 25%. Not like 10 seconds or 5 seconds, just a flat 25% reduction to res. This uh, Awaken 1 is not on the Volca that the game supplies us. So this fight's a bit tricky. Okay, You'll encounter these falling stones at an earlier stage. And another reason I think they give you Volca, I'm going to pause it, is to show you that if you put a tank down, a defender, okay, as long as it says it has this defender icon, whenever the boss casts the falling rocks on whatever map has falling rocks, wherever the defender is, the rocks are going to hit each defender. So the idea is, is you put one defender and then you stick Volca on the other side or some kind of other fighter to block the lane. 
and the rocks don't fall on fires. So I'm going to stick my constants in. I'm going to put her to the back. And the reason I put her to the back is, is when the rocks fall, they hit a nine tile grid. So any units standing on these three tiles are going to get their head caved in from the roof falling. So you don't want to put anything near her. Okay. Now the other thing, I'm going to heal her right away because whatever this Iraq is chucking out hurts. Okay. So I want you to be aware that this stage has many little spider mobs that show up. So it would be wise to put down your first damage dealer that does AOE area of effect multiple targets and see how that red conical arrow is above the defender and these red tiles here watch when these falling stones come down okay here it is so any unit that was within these red tiles is going to get hit hard and they'll probably die after three hits at most so here's the bonus of a piercer lord adding one tile see how she's able to extend almost to that unit that's stationary so i'm going to put down another piercer lord and watch this so they're both able to extend almost to this enemy here meaning that when enemies come out of that these uh little red portals blood pools or whatever on the floor near that araka boss they're already going to be targeted before they even realize what's going on so i'm going to stick my volka at the back down here so it takes longer for whatever enemies that are pathing to get to my defender. Here's the thing is that I don't know what gear is on this Volca. I don't know what her attributes are. The game won't allow you to see, but you're going to look and she's not going to die. There is no concern about my Volca. Okay. Now what else I want to do is I want to heal people, but I can't get to that tank over there. Right. So I'm just going to face my Camille facing up it's not necessary i could have put another damage dealer there but i want to show you how strong two healers and a volka are on the stage okay and always be mindful like this scythe of doom falling stones is going to continually cast if i take this defender off the map then the boss will cast the stones on everybody you have to have at least one defender so once you notice that that falling rock is, is about to finish. You can stick in a DPS to help if you really want to. Okay. As soon as this uh, big guy dies, you can pull that DPS off the field. Now, it might not look like it, but this uh, scythe bug thing here hits hard. Okay. Like Volca, she is well built. She's probably better built than most of your defenders currently. Okay. She's getting hit for 4K, and you'll see Volca's got like 50K HP. So now this is going to be the second site that's about the path down, all right? And see how I was telling you about these enemies here? Like, yes, they're shielded, so it's harder to hit them with piercers instead of magic damage. But by the time they arrive, one's already dead. So if you study the map a little bit, and you don't think, oh... I, I tried once and I failed. Well, I suck or this is too hard. Go in, try it out, practice. Okay. And you'll figure out placements for yourself. You don't need to have that extra tile range that I have. You don't need to bring in piercers. It's just the units that the, I was fortunate enough that the game gave me. So you'll see again, I'm going to bring in Voltus so that he's already helping to kill this scythe. I believe it's called a scythe. As soon as that scythe dies, I can take Voltus out again. Okay. He's not he's not overly necessary. But you'll see my tank constants, that's a legendary defender. And I think she's at like level 30 something. She's pretty strong. Those things hurt, man. That's how powerful this Volca is. Now you'll notice I took Voltus out. Voltus is no longer necessary. Okay. And you'll notice now that it's just the boss Araka. There's 14 out of 15 enemies in that top left corner. So my Shamir, I'm going to get rid of him so that I can bring him back to help attack the boss. So my Raiden, notice how I face him to the left? Because the boss is going to path down this lane. So you might ask, well, why, 
why do you keep your tank here, right? Or your defender? Because the boss, as you see, is targeting the defender. The boss is still going to cast a falling rock at least once, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so Queen Tarantula is casting falling stones. So if I took this defender out, you're probably going to wipe. You always keep the defender in. So say this defender died. That's why you notice I have another one here in Nivian, just in case, all right? So now the boss is targetable. I'm going to try to lay into her as hard as I can. I think she, she might cast Falling Stones once more. I'm not sure. But I'm going to show you something about Volca, where she's going to be inflicting vulnerabilities as well from her ultimate here, okay? So that's that red line from Volca. And see how the boss is just melting? So if I put a defender in there, it's going to cast stones again, maybe, on that defender. And it's not necessary. Look how strong Volca is. Watch. The boss might hit her once, okay? So she, she hit her for like 6,000. But now I bring in Shamir and look at the damage. Now, you can unlock this on day one and complete it. I was able to, but I decided I'm going to wait and show you a completed prologue one, okay? This is day three. You can do it on day one. You can do it on day 41. Whenever you do it, I suggest you do it as soon as possible and look at the rewards that you get here, okay? So within this uh, prologue gear chest, it looks because it's purple. I guess when I claim it, it's going to give me epic gear. So let's see what it... So all these items, it gave you a complete epic set for heroes, all right? And you'll look here, yeah, that's pretty crappy. A flat defense, it's it's not good. That H, this isn't, there's RNG to this, okay? That's not really good items, in case you're curious. But there's a full set of gear to stick on somebody. So I'm going to close this. And when you look, this is all the rewards that came from Prologue 1. No energy cost for any of this, okay? And I, I forget how many uh, diamonds and everything you get, but look at all this uh, experience potions. It's like 100,000 in experience almost. All these auto flights. So I've never seen this before. Again, I say this is this is new content. I don't know if Prologue 2 automatically unlocks now. So it looks like it might. Anyways, and we'll save that for another video. What we're going to do is the last section of the video, and we're going to do some summons. So you get a free summon at the start of every day. Yeah. So here's my free summon, and it's a hex banner. And if you started during a hex banner and you pull a hex, it's GG. He is one of the most powerful heroes for you when it's early game and it's guild boss. He's like a top three damage dealing unit. So I'm just hoping this is a good hero. This guy has a lot of good slows and I, I want to awaken him. But I, I'm very hopeful of pulling an epic. So I guess I can't summon any of the ancient summons that I have, it's not unlocked for me yet because either I haven't played for four days or something, or I haven't unlocked its banner because I didn't go far enough into campaign. I'm not certain. It's a little bit weird. So this is the other reason why I say fuse Livian as soon as possible, because not only her video is pretty neat, but uh, you're going to keep pulling rares like Rex over and over. So you don't really need him. It's better to get that epic tank, better base stats. So that's Voltus. We all get a Voltus. Now I'm going to use some diamonds. And hopefully something good comes out of this. I don't really want an Idril. But if I pull an Idril, I can show you how easy the game becomes when you have a map-wide range. And Idril is the only unit in the game that can hit enemies across the entire map. All right? I don't expect anything from these summons anyways, except the... Uh, the rares are cool because you sell them back for 30 diamonds and you can resummon again. Yeah, so that's about it. There's nothing special that happened today summon-wise, and that's okay. But what you can do is you'll look and you'll see this red number at the bottom. Okay, I'm at 141 total summons. And pity starts at 200. And if you're not aware, you can hit this details button. And you can go into your summoning record. And it'll show you who you summon on the what banner so it's telling me these are my last summons from using those blue crystals when you do a temple see it'll show you here's a temple so you can keep going back and you can count 
it's really silly how they've set it up. They should have a running timer. But my last legendary, you can see now if you really want to count for yourself. And then you can track your pity. I don't care. I'd rather just get surprised. Pity, yes, it's nice to plan ahead. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to rip for fun. So I hope this video has helped you with any of that content. I hope the annotations are a good focus point for helping you decide that. I don't want to watch a whole video, but please let me know in the comments if you'd rather have a long sustained video or if you'd rather me break them up into segments per fight. I hope my guide helps you. Please stay along with this free-to-play journey. It's going to be a good ride.